I'm Marie Ann Judd. I'm a Holocaust survivor, and I was born in 1923 in Czechoslovakia. We didn't, we didn't have uh, too many different things as other kids had. I didn't have a store-bought toy. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a toy service. <laughs> Then I went to school when I became six for a long, long walk, an hour walk every day, one way. I um, remember we had a, a neighbor lady, an, an un-Jewish neighbor lady that befriended us. But we were friendly with the Gentiles. We didn't make a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we enjoyed it. That was way before any before Hitler. Mm -hmm. That was when, until I was, and I went to school every day, later on, I, I went to Jewish school for four years, and uh, that's where I learned to read Hebrew, and I didn't know anything better, I didn't know anything else, so this was very good for me. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. I liked my life, and my childhood life. Then, when I was a teenager, which I, there was no teenage for me, because uh, whenever we went out to dancing or something, by then already the Hungarians were there, because they came in when I was 14. And um, then if we would, we, we would go out to dance, like normally, do, do we choose gentiles just in a, in a, in a hall that all week there was, all week there, there were teaching, dancing. One, one day, one of the people, they were our people that we knew. And one, one, one boy stood up and said, And from now on, Jews out. All the Jews have to go out. We don't want the Jews here. We got so bewildered and so hurt that we just walked out and never went back again. And we were taken to the ghetto. The, ge the ghetto was in Umbar, my own town. Mm -hmm. See, the Hungarians came in and they kept they took away our permits to operate any business and put in non-Jewish people to operate, in, especially in big businesses and large department stores and this is what they were there, so they were rich people there, rich Jews. All the young people were taken to the forced labor camp, and when they took us to the ghetto, we didn't have any men already, we just older men or, or handicapped. It was mostly women and children and old people. And I remember when they were taking us. It was raining. And it must have been very hard for the old people to leave everything. All their life, they, they lived a certain way that they learned from their parents and their parents from their parents. In, in our house, where I was born, there were about four generations born there. And, and now all of a sudden you had to leave it and uh, leave everything behind, just what you could carry. So what you carry, some warm clothes and some food, and that's all you could carry. And then they thought, took us to the ghetto. When we arrived to the ghetto and then we were out of food, they were keeping us there about six weeks, I don't know. I don't know how, I think, and, and, and you know, in, in, you, you, could, you could only carry in your hands things. That's all you could carry from your house. And so the food went very fast. And, uh, and then they opened a sort of kitchen, and then the kitchen, and the kitchen just brought out a bucket of, of, of soup. Water is soup, and they gave them once a day um, a bowl of that. 
And then they gave orders that we are being taken to be relocated. And they made sure that very few people knew each other. They took a bunch from here, took a bunch from there, you know. And part was that bad, um, that brick factory was so big. And all the Jews came in, so that there were thousands of Jews. And I looked up and I saw these black scars. One end to the other, I couldn't see the end on either side. I remember that the, uh, the animals used to be, and the train went by, and these things, the animals were in. I didn't have to wait too long, and I found out that we were the animals who went in. Such a terrible feeling. Taking us out of our house, he took everything away from us. But four days we arrived to Auschwitz. Four days in that wagon, no food, no, no drink, no toilet facilities, no space to lay down. We were so pushed in so many. And after four days they opened the gate, the drain. The train stopped, and they opened the gates. And I just, looked, when I looked out first, I couldn't see anything. It was all dark because this, you know, from the dark to the to the light, I saw anything. I heard some gruff voices calling us all kinds of names in German. Didn't even know what it meant, but the way I was saying it, I knew it's not good. And they were pushing and hitting and pushing. Hurry up, hurry up, get out of the cars. No, no, don't take anything. And my poor dad, he was carrying a small briefcase. And that's where he kept his talit and, and the twillin and the prayer book. And when they, even they hired, no, no packages, no packages. He reached for it. He was holding it. And that's his heart. And he came over and he started to beat him with the rifle bullet. And hearing him over and over. And watch I was standing next to him and the blood was running. And he kept still hearing until he collapsed to the ground, covered with blood. And I soon he, he killed him. And then he just motioned to some other prisoners. They were wearing their striped uniforms. And they carried and two of them ran over and grabbed my dad by, the, by each foot. Each one grabbed one foot and was pulling him toward the rock. And his head was bumping up and down. And the uneven ground, leaving a bloody trail. That's how we got to Auschwitz. And that's how my dad was killed. And why my dad was killed, being killed, and I was so busy with that. I didn't even see them separating the men from the women, from the group. But when I turned around and wanted to went to look for my mom, I saw that there were no men anymore. They were all separated. They were very efficient. My mother and my sisters were already pushed ahead, and they were marching toward the gas camp. Yes, they were killed. And they were marching to the other side, on the other side, toward the same, same place. Because they, they were guests. They were showered and they were guests in the same place. Just we didn't know. And that was my arrival to Auschwitz. <laughs>